Let's talk about freedom of expression within Islam, Sheikh. So, um, talk to me a little bit about the concept of freedom of expression within the Islamic uh, tradition. Yeah, freedom of expression, of course, um, you know, is based upon how you define, you know, that term. Yeah. Uh, everybody has the right to express themselves, and Islam never came, you know, to to qu to shut people up and and and, and to stop them from expressing you know, their understanding and expressing their wills. What Islam did do, however, was to bring revelation. And so revelation came, and, and the, the example of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, set a base for the society itself. And so that was, in a sense, the type of limits, you know, and based upon the morality that Islam set, which is similar to the other revealed religions yeah. in terms of um, uh, hygiene and in terms of family structures and whatnot, that sort of sets the limits for the society itself. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see that freedom of expression is different in, in different parts of the world. But every place has to have a limit. For those people who say there is no limit to freedom of expression, that's totally irrational. Mm -hmm. Because if I went into a movie and I shouted at the top of my lungs, fire! inside of this movie house and the people ran out and they were injured and killed I could be held yeah. accountable especially if there was no fire yeah I just decided to call it that was that was the wrong use of the word fire mm. if I was in the middle of an empty field and I shouted fire the people would say well he's just crazy mm. so there's a limit to what you can say yeah. so you'll see based upon the morality and the the law of a society um, the emphasis on the limits Many of the secular societies, you know, their limit is their flag, it's their, it's their royalty. You can say a lot of things, but you cannot talk against the king. Mm -hmm. You cannot talk against the flag. Mm -hmm. You cannot talk against the dominant race. And, and so they sort of set their limits, you know, like that. So is Islam set limits as well, gave a lot of room uh, for freedom of expression, but then, you know, set some limits within that. So you would, you would actually define this whole idea of freedom of expression as an actual Islamic concept. It, 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 there is basis for it within the religion itself. Yes, definitely, because uh, the, the, the Fokaha, the people of jurisprudence, would tell us, Asl uh, al-Ashya al iba so mm. the, 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 the basis of everything is permissibility. Yeah. Then there's limits, so it's not the other way around. I mean, sometimes you know, because Muslims find in Western society so many things that are against Islam, yeah. you think that Islam is anti-everything. Mm -hmm. But that's not what it is. It actually, you know, permitted people to live on the earth, to express themselves, um, to have freedom. But then there's some limits to that yeah. in terms of oppressing other people, killing people, fornication and adultery, murder, injury. So, so limits, you know, are set. Uh, within Islamic society. Okay, so let's talk, let's talk then, I guess, really about um, how, how we can actually really, uh, I guess, really balance between freedom of expression within the Western world, within secular Western world, and uh, within Islam in itself. Like right now, for instance, major events are happening in the Middle East. The ways a lot of Muslims are actually uh, expressing their concern here is through, basically through um, social media posting, through um, right. uh, protests, right? Um, and th through writing uh, a bunch of things. But the argument is always made is that these things that you yourself are doing here within this country here, you're not allowed to do within Muslim countries. How do you, how do you respond to that, Sheikh? Yeah, I mean, the whole concept of Muslim countries, there is no pure Muslim country. Yeah. There are some, peop some countries who are practicing aspects of Islam, and it usually ha has to do with personal law, yeah. like how you pray and how you fast and how you dress. And things like that, but in terms of Islamic Rituals. governments, yeah. they, they, there's no real straight Islamic government in a sense. Mm. There are areas where Muslims are more of a majority, you know, like that. And, and, and so, for the most part, to be honest and straightforward, uh, the so-called Muslim countries are basically controlled by royal families, dictatorships, central committees. Um, they're not free mm. in an Islamic sense. They, they benefit from the lack of, of, uh, of, I guess, really freedom of expression. That's right, because, you know, it is recorded that even in the case of, of some of the great companions of the Prophet Sallallahu 
you know, uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu an and Umar, that people actually stood up, you know, against Umar and Abu Bakr said like, you know, we will correct you with swords, mm. right? And, and, and Umar said, Alhamdulillah, I'm glad that there are people who will stand up for the truth. If you try to do that today, right, in the Muslim world, even in the Western countries, you'd end up in jail or dead. Yeah. But the Islamic way allowed that person to express themselves as long as they weren't going to take that expression and make it a reality. Yeah. Okay, if you want to say something, you have some machoism about you, you're strong, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay? Just, just don't do anything. So freedom of expression was allowed. And it is allowed, uh, you know, within Islam. Again, limits are there. And this is where today, especially with the Palestine situation, people are having a lot of problems because you know they find that whenever they express themselves about Palestine, they find a, a negative reaction. They're canceled. Mm. But, but whenever the other side, you know, comes in, then they're allowed to say whatever they want to want to say. So it's like there's a lot of double standards that are out there today. And some of the so-called Muslim leaders who are really ruling according to their own interest, they have double standards too. Mm -hmm. And the only way we can really go back is to go back to the original sources or to certain points in Islamic history, you know, when there were rulers, you know, who were just and balanced and, and they allowed freedom of expression, difference of opinion uh, within an Islamic society.